Historian Carol Reardon and Colonel Tom Vossler have been giving tours of Gettysburg Battlefield for many years and recently co-authored A Field Guide to Gettysburg. American History TV joined them to learn the story of the three-day battle through a selection of their favorite monuments. We are standing on Culp's Hill and we're standing near the monument to the 123rd New York Infantry. The seated figure you are looking at was entitled History Recording. It represents Cleo, the muse of history, writing down in a book for, to preserve for all time the truth of the events that happened here. The 123rd Pennsylvania was not one of the hard fighting regiments at Gettysburg. The 123rd had almost 500 men in ranks and lost only 14 men killed, wounded, and missing. But the 123rd New York Regimental Monument has a story to tell nonetheless. The 123rd was here on the afternoon of July 2nd. They helped to build the entrenchments, vaguely visible, just vaguely visible right at the tree line right here. They provided strength for this part of the Union line. This was the extreme right end of General Meade's fishhook defense, and the troops that were here intended to hold it. But when General Longstreet attacked the Union left down by Little Round Top, Devil's Den, the wheat field, General Meade had to live up to his promise to General Sickles to bring the rest of the army to support him, even though General Sickles had, had taken his corps way out in advance of the rest of the army. Some of the troops that General Meade called upon for that, for that duty were these troops from the Union Army's 12th Corps, including the 123rd New York. These troops were pulled out of line here, sent down to the other end of the, of the Union battle line, but arrived too late to really affect the, the, the fighting that was going on there. While they were gone from this position, the, the small number of New York troops that remained, about 1,500 men under Brigadier General George Sears Green, ex extended their line to cover the entire front where previously almost 9,000 men had stood. 1,500 men taking the place of 9,000. On the night of July 2nd, the Confederates attacked here, and this ground where we are standing right now came under Confederate control temporarily. During the night of July 2nd, well after dark, the 123rd New York and the other members of the 12th Corps arrived back in this area only to find that their trenches that they had built on July 2nd were now in Confederate hands. They wanted to get them back. There would be a nasty fight here on July 3rd to try to regain these trenches, and in the end, the 123rd New York will be able to resume its position along this line. There would be ultimately a Union victory here. Unfortunately, much of the 12th Corps story, much of the story of Culp's Hill, did not get into General Meade's report. General Meade wrote his report based on what his Corps commanders wrote about in their own reports. The 12th Corps, during the Battle of Gettysburg, had a rather awkward command system. General Slocum and General Williams both at times commanded the Corps, but also commanded other elements of the Army. Neither one of them actually felt that they should write a Corps report for Gettysburg. So when General Meade wrote up his report for the entire Army, he had little to say about what the 12th Corps did here. General Slocum, when he saw the oversight, uh, w was outraged by all this. He sent messages to General Meade demanding that General Meade rewrite his report, revise his report, to give the 12th Corps its due. General Meade, being a solid professional soldier, realized that, in fact, he had left out some important elements of what his army had accomplished here at Gettysburg, and he actually revised his report to include what the 12th Corps did in, in, um, in defending Culp's Hill right here. Shortly thereafter, the 12th Corps left the Army of the Potomac and went out to the Western Theater to fight. I think in their heart of hearts, they never really forgave General Meade for the oversight, even if he did uh, correct it a little bit later on. When the effort to begin erecting monuments here at Gettysburg began, the 12th Corps regiments that fought here at, on, on Culp's Hill were among the first to build their monuments. Even if General Meade slighted them, they would say, we will make sure that our, we remember to tell our own story. And so they came to this hill, and up and down the, the 12th Corps line, there are monument after monument. Some very simple, some very eloquent like this. 
but it's Cleo sitting up here recording the truth of history that really sums up the 12 core story. If you're going to tell the story of history, you must include all of it.